Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video. Today I will be showing you how to do a coloring technique called the glazing method, which also has similar steps to another technique called gradient mapping, but it can give you different end results. I got this idea from a few artists that use this method in Photoshop and I wanted to see if I could achieve similar if not better results in Clip Studio Paint, which I have. And I want to pass on what I've learned to anyone that comes across this video. If you also want to learn the Photoshop version of this technique, links to those videos will be available in the upper right corner and in the description down below. Now let's get into it. Now we're going to begin with the line work. Sometimes I like to take sketches from my sketchbook and ink them, but that's always optional. As you can also see, I expanded the canvas in order to add a little detail to her hair. When it comes to the tools I use for inking, my preference is the figure tool because of how amazing the line weight and end results can be. If you want a more in-depth video about how to use the figure tool, you can always check out my first tutorial which will be linked down below in the description and it'll also be linked in the upper right corner of this video. Other than that, you can also freehand your line work while utilizing the stabilization tool. As long as you are comfortable, especially if you don't have a drawing tablet, that is all that matters. So now that our line work is complete, we're going to shift into the base grayscale colors. For this, you're going to want to rely on the value scale, which is one of the most important lessons on the basic fundamentals of art. Well, actually, every part of the basic fundamentals is important, but for this technique in particular, you're going to want to understand the difference between highlights, lowlights, midtones, and shadows. The base color I'll be using is a medium light gray. For the highlights and lowlights, I'll be using pure white and light gray. And for the shadows, I'll be using the darkest gray, but not black. You're also probably wondering, how do I place the shadows and the highlights? There are multiple ways of figuring out how to place your shadows and highlights properly. 1. Seek out a photographic reference with intense lighting that matches what's in your imagination and copy it. 2. Use the light bulb method. You draw a light bulb on a different layer, of course in a direction that you want your light to hit your subject and do the best you can to guess where the shadows and highlights lie. And number three, if all else fails, be your own reference. Just make sure you use intense lighting in order to achieve the results you want. References are your friend, use them. Next up is choosing your colors. And we will also be getting into the importance of your layer settings later on in this video. Before we color, you're going to want to merge all the grayscale layers together, which is what I did off camera. Create a new layer with the clip layer button turned on. Then we're going to set the layer to multiply, change the brush colors to red, and we're going to use the bucket tool in order to fill that layer. The reason why we're using red for the under layer of the skin is because it'll add more life to your character. And it won't make the skin look too washed out by the gray undertones. See the difference? This tip can apply for humans, humanoid characters, animals, and anthropomorphic characters considering that they all bleed red. After all that, we're going to make separate layers for the skin, hair, eyes, mouth, dress, and accessories. If you want to make more layers than that, then that's perfectly fine. But be sure to label them in order to keep track of what layers you're drawing on. Trust me, your, your save file will love you for this. You can rename your layer by double clicking the layer name, which should highlight the original name in blue. And then that should allow you to enter any layer name you want to. The color scheme I chose to go with will be presented on the screen along with the layer settings. Go ahead and pause the video if you need more time to read through. Now. Why is changing your layer settings so important? Well, because if you leave every single layer on normal mode, none of the under layers or shading will peer through your base colors. It'll just mask everything and you'll have to shade it all over again. And trust me, you don't want to do that. So don't be shy when it comes to experimenting with various layer settings. You'll get some pretty interesting results. 
last but certainly not least, is the final touches. If you don't feel like going any further, then you can always stop on the previous step. However, I think this portrait can use a little bit more flair. So I decided to merge the color layers together, create four more layers, two set on multiply mode and two set on color dodge mode, and proceeded to add more shading to the iris of her eyes, more shading to her hair and underarms, while also adding highlights to her hair, earring, skin, and her eyes to make her look more lively. You can even go further than that once you've added more definition to your character by merging the color layers and line art all together, duplicate that layer, and set the original layer's opacity to 50%. And after you're done setting the opacity, you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna go back to the duplicate layer because this is where all your edits are gonna happen. So after that, you're gonna wanna go to edit, go down to tonal correction, and click color balance or tone curve to color correct that layer and only that layer. After you're done adjusting, go to filter, then blur, then select Gaussian blur in order to soften the piece a little more. This will make it, you know, have that anime effect if you so want an anime effect on your piece. And once you're all complete, with uh, editing your character and everything like that, making it soft, making it more anime style or whatnot, uh, the background is pretty much fair game. So you can do whatever you want with the background. I chose to do a circle. You can go ahead and do a square if you want to. Triangle, I don't care. Just uh, as long as it looks cohesive and good with your character or you think it looks good with the character that you drew. And that's all the steps in order to achieve the glazing method in Clip Studio Paint. I hope this was helpful and easy to understand. Also, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or steps that you want me to go over again, please leave a comment down below or DM me through my Instagram page or TikTok page. And uh, thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe for more upcoming content. I will definitely be posting more tutorials. Um, have a wonderful afternoon, day, or evening, and shalom!